This video shows how GASMED DX4040 FCIR gas analyzer can be used in measurements of greenhouse gases emitted from soil surfaces. One of the most convenient ways to monitor greenhouse gases from soil is to use open bottom soil chamber integrated with a portable gas analyzer. Measurements are accomplished by capturing emission gases from soil surface within a chamber and measuring concentration changes over time. Each chamber consists of two parts, a collar, which can be rectangular or cylindrical, and a lid, which is tightly fixed to the collar. In this demonstration, a homemade chamber was used. Another option is to use an automated chamber manufactured by a specialized company. Both types of chambers are equally suitable for gas met gas analyzers. The first measurement site was a young forest in northern Helsinki. Before starting the measurement, the collar was placed to the ground to prevent lateral flow of gases. The target was to apply even pressure across the collar and to mount it deep enough. Usually this is done 24 hours prior to the measurement, but in this case the collar was placed only a few minutes before starting the measurement. The gas analyzer was connected to the chamber by inlet and outlet tubes. There was an opening on top of the lid, diameter 50 mm, through which both tubes were placed. The emission gas samples were collected from the chamber's headspace, whereas the outlet tube was placed near the soil surface. The analyzer was operated by a PDA, personal digital assistant. Communication between the analyzer and the PDA is wireless with Bluetooth protocol. Large touchscreen buttons and a keypad make this PDA easy to use in field conditions. The PDA gives continuous readings of the concentration changes, which can be easily followed in real time. It is equipped with CalcMet Light software, which allows simultaneous analysis of 25 gases. GASMET greenhouse gas application includes six standard gas components water, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, ammonia, and carbon monoxide. The measuring interval was selected to be 60 seconds in order to optimize the signal to noise ratio. All the measured data was stored in PDA. Here we are uh, starting to do some table measurements with your GASMET instrument. Uh, we have a chamber that we will put on the soil and we expect to have a CO2 and methane emissions from, from, the, from the soil. It's winter, so we don't know whether there's any microbial activity, but we, we will test. But this is quite a wet place, so there might be some methane emissions. Okay, let's try. Before installing the lid, the analyzer was turned on and few measurement points were taken from ambient air. So now the chamber is in place and we can start following what do we see in the, in the instrument. And we have to be sure that everything is closed, that we have a closed loop uh, to the analyzer. Okay, so we have a starting concentration 445 for CO2 methane 1.25 and nitrous oxide 0.339. I expect that we should wait maybe 15 minutes to see any changes. In order to stabilize the conditions inside the chamber and guarantee representative sampling, the opening was sealed with duct tape to prevent any leakage air coming in. The gas analyzer and the soil chamber formed a closed lip system in which the gas sample was circulated through the analyzer and then back to the chamber. In a closed-loop system like this, the gas concentrations increase over time. 
With access to online results, the operator can react flexibly to any unexpected situations during measurements, giving researchers the ability and freedom to modify their experimental design whenever required. The next measurement site was an agricultural field, also situated in northern Helsinki. The experimental setup was exactly the same, and the field was expected to emit more nitrous oxide. Yeah, we are doing chamber measurements on the on the agricultural plain ground to see whether we see any nitrous oxide emissions. I think we have some doubt. It's so cold and nobody is living in the soil. <laughs> We have a tiny increase in nitrous oxide. That we, so that we have an emission. As we would told here uh, in the field that there might be some nitrous oxide emissions. Actually, there is also CO2 is increasing only very little. So I, I don't think there is much, much microbial activity in the soil. Uh, it's bare soil and it's been open for long time so all the activity has gone but we will wait a short while a couple of minutes and then we then we know in the first measurement site the total measurement time was around 30 minutes contrary to what was expected the forest was not the source of methane mostly due to the low temperature of soil causing low microbial activity. In fact, the soil acts as a sink of methane and a source of CO2. The concentration of carbon dioxide increased around 100 ppm from the initial concentration. On the agricultural field, the measurement time was much lower, less than 10 minutes. All the concentrations were really stable during the measurement. Only some small fluctuation can be seen in methane concentration and a tiny increase, only few ppm, in CO2 concentration. After watching this video, you should have an idea how to measure greenhouse gases from soil using GasMed DX4004 the gas analyzer in conjunction with the chamber. By using this analyzer, the errors caused by manual sampling can be avoided, and thanks to its low weight and roughness, it is well suited for fieldwork. In addition, CalcMet software allows the user to post process and reanalyze sample spectra acquired during field measurements. This analyzer allows researchers to build their own laboratory on the field just next to, to the emission sites. If you'd like to learn more about GasMed DX4040, please contact GasMed or visit us on the web www.gasmed.com and remember to follow us on LinkedIn. Thank you for watching.